Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. And welcome to date night with, with the, pools. the pools. Here we are uh, with you tonight. And we're so grateful, of course, always to have you uh, logged on and watching. We're thankful to God for all of you that do so faithfully um, yeah. commit to just pull up and, and hang out with us, drop your comments and all that good stuff. And so we don't want you to think that that goes unnoticed. Thank you so much for that. Now I'm gonna go ahead and open up with prayer, excited about what we have tonight. Father, we thank you for your word. And of course, we always give you praise for this setting and for this time, thanking you for those who are, who are viewing this. And we thank you, Father, even for your word that will go forth as we continue with, so you wanna get married, let's talk. So we ask that you would breathe on what is said, that people will have ears to hear and a will to do what the Spirit of the Lord is saying. In Jesus' name, amen. And amen. Amen. Praise amen. God. And to God be the glory. This is our uh, mantra year. Uh, our mantra this year, mm -hmm. if you will, God's urgency of now. It's urgent that you get this. It is urgent. Right now. And we just want our beloved single people to get this right now. Be passionate about God. The Bible tells us in Matthew 6, that we're to seek first the kingdom mm -hmm. and his righteousness and all the things will be added. The Bible also says to us in Philippians 3.10, I love how the uh, oh. Amplified Translation, mm -hmm. the Amplified Classic says Philippians 3.10. I've just given you some scriptures before we get into what we're going to talk about tonight. Right. The Bible says in Philippians 3.10 in the Amplified Classic Version Classic. of the Bible, for my determined purpose is that I may know him. Mm -hmm. Did you hear that? My determined purpose is that I may know him, that I may progressively become more deeply and intimately acquainted with him, perceiving and recognizing and understanding the wonders of of his person more strongly and more clearly. Yeah. That's the part I want to focus on, the A part, because we're talking about this week, we've been ministering the last couple weeks that we've been with you, so you want to get married, let's talk, uh -huh. and to encourage your hearts. Last week, we talked about discovering your destiny, discovering. and this time, this week, we're in chapter four, and we're going to talk about in pursuit of purpose. In pursuit, and I think even with that verse of scripture, the Amplified Classic, my determined purpose, purpose my determined purpose. The New English translation says, my aim. My aim, my goal. Yeah. My aim is to know him. My aim, my determined purpose. And That's really right. what was so what's so amazing with that statement tied into tonight's topic dealing with pursuit and what is your purpose or pursuing or in pursuit of, in pursuit your of purpose. rather That's your right. purpose is that we can allow the enemy this is for singles and married yeah. to cause us to become complacent in our current circumstance that we lose our edge we lose our pursuit we know purpose but we don't pursue it anymore we don't have a we don't have this drive, hunger this drive and so i thought that was good even i was in the book and we'll let you get into it in a moment but one of the headings you have in here is dealing with our drive as it talks about purpose because again purpose isn't coming to you that's right and we can so easily become complacent with mm -hmm. the things of god and, and even if we drop down to verse 14 philippians chapter 3 this particular entire chapter is just such a good um, word in regards to pursuing in pursuit of your purpose because Paul said, my determined purpose is my that I may know him. Purpose. And then when, and you see these words, he's determined, he had counted all things lost. The, the, the ultimate goal for him was to know God. In verse mm -hmm. four, let me say, on verse 14, it says, I press toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God. I press. And in verse 13, forgetting behind, reaching forward. So right. reaching forward and pressing, that connotes a drive that does not speak to us about complacency right. and being relaxed. No, it get, puts us in the mind of being in pursuit of something. And so we want you to pursue your purpose. We talked about last week that our destiny is a predetermined course of events. Vision is God's divinely revealed plan and purpose is the original intent of a thing. The we want you intent. to What's discover, that's right, what God's original intent is for your life. Right. What is my purpose that's right what is my what is god's original intent for my life for me mm -hmm. that in the sense of that that will bring him 
glory. Glory. Because ultimately, that's what we want to do is yeah, glorify it, God. It has to be. It has to be. That's right. It has to be. And when we talk, again, our, our purpose, mm -hmm. we understand that a washing machine, when it was created, it was created and manufactured to do what? Wash, wash clothes. clothes. Mm -hmm. However, if you take that self-same washing machine, fill it with dirt. Fill it with dirt. Put some seeds in yes. there. And to plant awesome. you a garden in your washing machine, you water it. Pretty nurture, creative, very you're creative. You're going to have. You have a, 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 a fancy planter. A fancy planter, and it's very creative. People will ooh and ah, but the, the the what we will miss is that though it is serving a purpose, it will not be fulfilling its, its purpose. purpose. And so many times in relationship, single relationship. I, instead of pursuing my purpose, I wind up fulfilling a purpose, but it's not my own. That's right. You're still not satisfied. And I'm not satisfied. That's so right. then I conclude if I was only married, then I'll be fine. Then you get married, but because most, most, most people that, most people at the altar, when they get married, don't have a clue what their purpose is. So now, not I only... I mean, even in the simplest form, and that is to glorify God right, in everything right, we do. Right, I because mean, even every, most of what we do is selfish. That's right. So I got married because I wanted to. That's right. I, got, I married you because I wanted to. And so once we get married, we forgot that the, the, the purpose of it was to bring God glory. I thought the purpose was for you to satisfy me or vice versa. So as a single person, many times single people are missing it because we haven't gotten the, in the pursuit part That's of it. Right. We're waiting on it to be fulfilled, but it's kind of like, uh, uh, if you think of it from the standpoint of, if you have a flight to catch. Now, there are some folk who are literally fortunate enough, you're, you walk outside, there's a hangar connected to your home. There's not too many homes like that. We, we saw a, a, a neighborhood at this golf course where the street is actually a runway and all the homes had a hangar. So they all had private private little planes where they walk right out. But most, for the most of us, if you're gonna fly, even if you are flying a private jet, you have to go to it. That's right. So even though it's there, the what we want, we want the jet to come to us, ring the doorbell, we get in it and then we take off. That's not the That's way not it how is. It happens. That's right. We have to do the practical. You I love have it. to do uh, the Pastor practical. Pastor Valerie has said this in in regards to uh, different things and yeah. and, most and it applies to it this applies for to this sure. Too. We have we if we would just do the practical, God. we can trust God with the providential. Mm -hmm. Now, in order to pursue your purpose, you almost have to have the seed of it planted in your heart, and the seed gets planted in your heart for vision and purpose from spending time with God. And then I hear, I keep hearing almost faintly in my ear, well, I don't know what God has called me to do. I don't know what I'm, what I was born. I don't, I don't have a, I don't know what my destiny is. I don't know what my vision is. I don't, I don't have a vision. I don't know what my purpose is. Well, the Bible says in Jeremiah 33 and 3, call to me and I will answer you and, and tell you, show you, show you great and mighty things that you don't know. We talked about the last time that we were together, how that God really is, he's not going to do things that really are outside his character traits that he He's already put in this. So what you're called to do most likely stems from something that you already love doing. But in order to pursue it, to discover it, you have to spend time with God mm -hmm. and ask him to show you. And I promise you that he will. And when he does, when he does, you truly will have the drive of a champion. That, that's the key. The drive of a champion. We're in I, Olympic season. Oh, man. I was just about to say that this, these, these Olympics, we were watching the trials last week with the, with the gymnast and, and the track and field and just always this time of this time of year every four years or so we get so excited about it because we watch these athletes and we see the finished product but what they sacrifice what they what they put into this pursuit for a medal for 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 to stand on the podium That's and right. hear their national anthem but they sacrifice so much for one purpose to win a medal to, to win, win a goal imagine if we just took half of that pursuit mm. to hear God clearly I'm not I'm not gonna settle for I thought God said I think it's God what if we had that type of passion that type of pursuit 
and, and just getting closer. Because again, you say, I'm not sure. Paul helps us in Philippians 3. That's right. The Amplified Classic, my determined purpose is that I may know him. And think about this word determination. <coughs> Excuse me. When you are determined to do something, mm -hmm. these athletes are determined to win. And I'm so, I get so excited and I think I kind of feel like I'm living vicariously through them. But only what I do, I just do a little bit. I am not a professional swimmer, but I can swim. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm not a professional runner, but I can run. And I remember even running and being a part of a track and field team, mm -hmm. but I was nowhere no way, shape, or form in the condition that these athletes were. Now let's look at, because we're talking about being in pursuit of purpose. These athletes are in pursuit yeah. of winning this prize. 1 Corinthians 9, 24. 1 oh. Corinthians 9, 24. Do you know, do you not know that those who run in a race all, all run, run. Mm -hmm. but one receives the prize? I was, you know, we're rooting for the underdog, these these uh, the I guess the old heads, so to speak. This is their last opportunity, mm -hmm. and we I can't remember the guy's name, but he was running in the the final for the hundred, and he ended up pulling up. Oh, this was I his believe, Gatlin, I believe. Yeah, yes. uh, uh, Gatlin. It was his last opportunity, but because he, you know, he wanted to win, and we want the underdogs to we're win. We're rooting for and him. We want them to win. They all run. Allison Fields, they all run, but only one, the only the top three are even going to make it mm -hmm. to the Olympics. So do all run, but only one receives the prize. Yeah. Run in such a way that you may obtain it. When you're right. in pursuit of your purpose, you have to run in such a way to obtain what God is calling you to do. And that may require you to disconnect from some people who are well, uh, pulling you back. That's the whole thing. The Bible says in Hebrews chapter 12, laying aside every weight, every weight and, and the, the sin. sin. That so easily beset us. You got to shed some things in order to pursue your. And this is why it's so important as as a single Christian person, in order to pursue my purpose, I've got to be willing to let things go, let people go. I've got to be willing to change even what I even thought. Even me, yeah. Because many a times the the. The reason we don't know what our purpose is, we've already determined what we purpose to want. Or what we purpose to do. Right. Well, I don't want to do that. I want to be this. I don't want to be that. I want I'm, even something as simple as whether or not you want to be a parent when you get married. Mm -hmm. Oh, I don't want to be a parent. Well, how do you, is that, is that the Lord's purpose for you? That's right. Is that God's will for your life? And so it's so important that we discover that and in the discovering so how do i discover it i love it and you you read here the purpose the pursuit of it but i, I if we could can we go to romans no first corinthians we're already in first corinthians let's stay there but go to chapter seven. First corinthians chapter seven sweet because again for the single person for the single person when it says i'm not sure but the bible tells us okay what are you doing in the meantime yeah what do I do while I'm trying to discover what God wants me to do? What do I do? All right. I so, know where you're going. Right? Mm -hmm. So here's what I love it. It says in, in verse, verse 32. Yeah, verse 32. It says, but I would, and this is the, the King, King James, James, and then you can read the new if it's a little better. But it says, I would have you without carefulness. He that is unmarried, single people, careth for the things that belong to the Lord how he may please the Lord. So I don't know what to do. Well, here, here's how I discover many times, here's how I discover my purpose. In my pursuit of pleasing the Lord, he reveals my purpose. That's right. But I want him to show me what's in it for me before I even go after him because I'm not trying to please him. I'm hoping what he has for me pleases Kinda me. Kind of fits into what I like. Mm -hmm. Let me read that that verse. Mm -hmm. Let me read it in the message translation. Yes. I, I, I'm looking forward to, uh, uh, I don't know, in my folly, perhaps seeing Pastor Peterson on the other side in glory. His teaching and his revelation of the scripture is such a blessing. Verse 32. I want you to live as free of complications as possible. Mm -hmm. People put on their uh, status in social media complicated. 
Hmm. They're in a relationship. What your relationship status? It's complicated. Really? But God wants us to live as it does. You know? I didn't know that. Yeah, it's complicated. Wow, that's deep. But anyway, as free, as free of complications as possible. If you're in a complicated relationship, listen. This verse says, I want you to live as free of complication as possible. Mm -hmm. When you're married, you're free to concentrate on simply pleasing when the you're, master. When you're not married. When you are unmarried. 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 When you are unmarried. Yeah. Because marriage, verse 33, involves you in all the nuts and bolts of domestic life and in wanting to please your spouse. Now, since you're reading it, you might as well read verse 35 in the message. Uh, third, verse 35. Huh? Verse 35. I'm trying to be helpful and make it easy as possible, as easy as possible, not to make things harder. All I want, oh, this is good. All I want is for you to be able to develop, develop a way of life which in you, which rather, in which you can spend plenty of time together with the master without a lot, a lot of, of distraction. distraction. That's powerful. That's why I don't know what I'm called to. That's why I don't know my destiny. That's why I don't know my purpose because there are too, too many, many distractions. distractions. And one of the things, babe, I thought it was so interesting because you talked about the 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 changing the the use of the washer, right? Mm -hmm. But that doesn't change its purpose. Its original intent. And right. so um, I was just looking at a little video where it was saying how to save money on the expensive potter, the, mm -hmm. the expensive pottery outside. Mm -hmm. Somebody bought just a regular plastic trash can. Okay. And took a doormat, glued the doormat, the, the kind with the little embroidered, glued it around the trash can, mm -hmm. spray painted the whole thing, drilled holes in it, took the lid, the little flip lid, took the lid, drilled holes with that, and then glued the lid, put the planter up, you know, put the lid upside down, put the plants and the, the, the fertilizer in it, uh -huh. and then put a big rock in the in the trash can so it wouldn't move. Right. Spray paint the whole thing, set it out there, it's got flowers hanging out. It looks like it was supposed to be that way. Now, it looks great, but here's why I say that, because the enemy loves for us to look like we're supposed to be doing that. Oh, that's good. That's good. But the purpose of that thing, that thing was created to, to be a trash can. That's right. But the owner <clears throat> has a right to do with whatever he wants to do with it. Here's the thing for us, we know ultimately we are not our own. Our life is not our own, right? He is the owner. He has a right to do with us what he what he wills, but he won't override our will. Our will. So that means even though he wants to get glory out of my life, I can flip the script and say, I don't want to do that. Mm -hmm. And so the danger for us in the pursuit, and, and we'll wrap it up with, with uh, just some of those thoughts, but with those questions you have at the back, in this chapter but so, so, so the danger to me is it's not that God doesn't want to get the glory out of your life and it's not that that he hasn't made it possible for you to find and pursue your purpose the real challenge is it's not always friends it's not it's not always circumstances a lot of times what's blocking me from pursuing my purpose is me yeah Oh, absolutely. I'm that. blocking my own self because I'm not ready to be fully dependent. I mean, fully attentive to the Lord. Because society says, society says that once you hit a certain age, you should oh. already be married. Once you hit a certain age, yeah. you should be married with two yeah, by now you should kids, have two a house yeah, with, a, with fence, a picket fence, two and a, half and a dog fence, and a right. fish and all of that. But that's what the world says. That's what society says. The world, and it's really, it's crept into the church where it makes it seem Crap. like, well, it's in the church, okay. Join the that church. It makes it seem like that being single is a disease. Or it's some type of affirmity or an affliction. You still single? Well, wait a minute. Right. Why, why do I still have to be single? Why does why it have can't to be I, still? Right. Why can't I just be single, enjoying God, loving the Lord, enjoying being a servant of the Most High God, as opposed to you making me feel like, or people making uh, single believers feel like, that they're less of a person because they're single. Listen, we're, you're no less of a person. We're all created in His likeness and image. Hallelujah. Uh, our roles are different. Yeah. It's different being single than being 
ain't married, but I'm no less important because no. I'm single. Amen. Nor married. And here's what's so powerful. The most, well, obviously, Jesus Christ is our example and example right. in all things. He was single on earth. That's right. So that's one. But, but even you say, well, Jesus don't count. Well, you take take Paul, the most quoted um, person in the New Testament aside from Christ himself is Paul. And the Apostle Paul was single. Mm, but what right. did he do in, with his singleness? He pursued He pursued Christ. God. Oh, he yeah. went after God hard. That's and right. so, again... Here's what I love. It's not, are you still single? The question is, are you still while single? That's right. Can you just be, be still, still and single? And know God. Right. Be still and know. Because what we are doing, we're being busy single. Mm -hmm. But if I'm not being busy in my pursuit of purpose, then I become a busy body. That's right. And it really, we have to learn this. This is so important to mm -hmm. be in pursuit of of our purpose to be in pursuit of God because otherwise remember years ago we uh, when we were kids you know that song the idle mind is a playground for the devil mm -hmm. and so really an idle life opens the door for demonic activity as a believer an idle life sitting around doing nothing just um, waiting for time to pass and now this pandemic paradox you would think that now that we're coming to the back end of it people will want to get back to work people will want to get you back to think. doing things because we it seems like we've been held hostage to this pandemic all these years but the problem now that we are kind of on the back side of the things of this pandemic people don't want to go to work because they're lazy. They've gotten complacent. They've gotten comfortable. You cannot be comfortable, complacent, and lazy in the things of God. You have to pursue your purpose We've with got passion. to pursue with right. passion. And and here's the thing, babe, and we got, as we kind of bring Maybe this we'll down, ask these we'll, we'll ask things. these. Because the first thing, if you don't know, here's the thing. You may not know the answer, but we know who the answer is. That's right. So we know who to ask, right? So because the first, the first one, question is, yes. I mean, do you know what you're born to do? You might not know. You may not know, but but Jeremiah 33 3 says, easy. I don't know what I'm born to do, but I know who to call on and because that's right. I can call to him and he will show me great and mighty things that I am unaware of. And I can be faithful where that's I am. That's right. That's now, right. if you don't know, focus your time and energy on seeking the kingdom and being about kingdom business. In 2 Corinthians 9, focus your attention, like Paul said, like an athlete, strive yeah. and think about the Olympics. Watch the Olympics this summer and think yeah. about. And the, just no matter what sport. No matter what sport. I mean, archery. These people dedicate their Lives. life to one event. That's right. Now, and then think about it. The, the Olympics were supposed to be last year. Mm -hmm. They had to be postponed. So these athletes didn't take the time off during no, the pandemic. They got created. They got created. They got created they got to created. stay in shape so that's they can right. Because they're looking good. Remain they're, in pursuit of that that's purpose. That's right. That's right. So focus your time and energy on God. Now, practically speaking, number three, I mean, what is it that you love to do that you would do whether you got paid for it or not? Think about this, write it down, give it some prayerful consideration because typically that's going to place you on the road tied to into what it. God yes, has yes. called you mm -hmm. to be. Then also think about this in discovering your destiny and pursuing your purpose. Where have you come from? We've heard it so many times. There's a message in your, uh, there's a message from your misery. Yeah, or your, there's your a ministry. In your mess, there's a ministry, ministry in your, in your misery. However you want to say it. Where have you that. come from? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where have you come from? I came from uh, just having a, being abused and misused by men. It really was my own doing and my own choice, but God brought me out of that. And I'm able to minister to women who feel light, low, and little about themselves mm -hmm. because of relationships they've been in. Where have you come from? What has God delivered you and let, from? Let me say He'll this on that. To minister to others. And don't, don't you dare feel bad or feel some kind of way that your testimony isn't as powerful if you haven't come from anything like that. If that's you good. you've been a good girl all your life, or a good that's the young most man, incredible testimony. that's the testimony that's in and of itself. Well, I don't, I wasn't abused. I, I I don't have baby mama drama. I I don't have a record. I I've never put anything in my arm or or inhaled anything in my nose. There's nothing to be ashamed that's of. Right. To God be the glory. That's right. But you still came from something. That's so right. that's what we we still find that. And we can help somebody. You that's don't right. have to give in because I didn't. That's right. So we that's can share right. that as well. That's right. And then finally. Because I remember Dr. Poole and I, when we were 
uh, this was over 20 years ago, we were living in St. Louis and one of the elders from the church called and wanted to speak to uh, Brother Poole at the time and asked him, what were you going to do with the call of God on, on your, your life? life? What are you going to do with And because he was not going to be able to stand before the Lord and say, I didn't do what I felt you were calling me to do because of this, that, and right. the other. Or this, that, and the third is what people mm -hmm. what people say. You, he wouldn't be able to say that. So you have to ask yourself, what am I going to do with the call of God on my life? What am I going to do with what God has placed in me? Will you be able to stand before God and hear, well done? Or are you going to stand before God and give excuses? That's right. why perhaps there's going to be a lot right. of tears in heaven. Right. Don't, whatever you do, and don't you dare say, well, I'm not called anything. We all have a purpose. That's right. We were born with it. So God has something for you to do. That's right. For some, it could be something as simple as, I, I, I want you to be like Paul. I want you to be a globetrotter. But then think about it. Mary, the precious mother of Jesus, she was born to give birth to the that's Lord. That's right. Because everybody's not called to frontline ministry. Everybody's not called. Everybody, and that's not that's not a bad thing that's either. A, but if you don't get in where, again, in don't be a wash machine that's growing plants. That's Whatever right. you do, make sure what you're being productive at is your purpose, not just what you want to do. Right. And one of the key things that this has helped me through the years to know well how do you know because there's many things that i like to do that i'm good at but all of those things usually after a while no matter how much enjoyment it brings i get bored with it mm -hmm. i get bored with it but i've never gotten bored with preaching the gospel no, so what's the last thing thing that's what right. what again it goes back to like you said it earlier and we've said this before what is it that you love to do that you would do whether you got paid, paid for, for it or, or not, not or that you would even pay to do that's i mean right. i just love to do this and so because of that it helps me, it helps shape me toward it. Now, I'm not talking about a hobby. I'm not talking about some re recreation. I'm talking about, I'm talking about that thing that you're willing to pursue. That's right. And that you will, at the end of the day, when you've done that, you feel like. You feel satisfied. Yeah. You feel fulfilled because you're doing what God has called you to do. Well, we're out of time. We got to go. We are so blessed, so grateful yes. that uh, that we, Dr. Poole and I, had this time together, that we've had this time together with you. If you have any questions, comments, put it in the box. Send it to the church, 702-602-0777 under questions, and we'll do our best by the Spirit of the Lord to answer those questions. Right, and before we go, let me give you some quick announcements. First of all, we want to give a shout out to our baby girl, Shekinah, her Ooh. birthday was on yesterday, yes. July 1st. Happy birthday. happy birthday. Again, Ooh. happy birthday. But we wanted to say this. Now, you, next week, we will not be with you because we'll be celebrating 29, 29 years, years of marriage. Wow. And so, and we were going to try to do it remotely. And I thought, why? We're going to be on vacation. We, we will be back. Praise the Lord. So we will be back with you date night. There'll be no date night next week. We're going to just be away somewhere enjoying ourselves. 29 years of marriage. To God be the glory. Thank you for your prayers. And we look forward to seeing you not next week, but the one week from. So right. two weeks from tonight, we'll be back. We'll be home. We'll be refreshed. We'll revived, be revived. Renewed. We'll be renewed. And we'll be ready to pick up with chapter number five. So you want to get married, let's talk. But until then, y'all have a blessed night. Be safe this weekend. It's the 4th of July. Our independence is in him. Hallelujah. We are dependent on the Lord. Right. Amen. But you have a great time. Be safe out there and please stay hydrated. Does that sound good? That sounds great. Amen. We love y'all. We'll Bless see you, you next time.